and I got uh, a little cut off there with an alarm, but um, the story about Terry Dobson is this, and it might be a good separate video anyway. Aikido Master, he's on a train wrestling with the question, when is it okay to use your force, use your martial skill to cause harm to someone else? And you know, maybe you're a soldier, or maybe you're a martial artist in these days, or maybe you're just someone in the workplace that's a little bit bigger or has a position of power. When is it okay to use your force on somebody else? Um, and his Aikido Master said never. It's never okay. Because what we're focused on with martial arts, what we're focused on with this self-discipline is self-mastery of not losing your center, not getting so angry that you cause harm to yourself because anger doesn't feel very good. It's very empowering, but it, it also can be very, very destructive to the self. Um, and it's also very intense and very harmful for your people that are around you, the people that are your closest to you or that you work with. So he's on this train and there's a laborer who comes on and he's, uh, He's big, he's strong, he's angry, he's drunk, you know, he's wild, and um, he's throwing punches at random people. He's just blind with, blind with anger. And he throws a punch at a, at a woman, and she happens to be carrying a child, and he misses. Uh, but he gets so angry, he starts tearing at the train car, you know, at those upright brass poles in a train, he's tearing at it. And this Aikido master, you know, he's training eight hours a day. He's, he's fit, he's strong, he's skilled, he knows how to roll, he knows how to take someone's energy. And so he says, well, this is a good opportunity. You know, this is, I'm in the right here. You know, I can do some good, I can be angry at this person and I can actually cause harm to him because I'm, I'm in the right. And so he taunts this uh, laborer, he says, hey. And the laborer asks him, what do you want? And uh, to goad him, he, he blows him a kiss, you know. It really will set someone on fire if you do that. Really taunts him. And he blows him a kiss, and this laborer is just enraged. He's like a charging bull. And in Aikido, you know, you, you take someone's energy, you move with it, you uh, redirect it, similar with uh, Taiji. And so just as this laborer is about to charge him, they both hear off to the side the sweet little voice that says, Hey. It just says, Hey. You know, off to the side. And they both look, and on this packed train car, there's this sweet-looking old old man in his 70s in a, in a nice kimono. He's not even paying attention to the Saikido guy. He's paying attention to the laborer. And his eyes are just sparkling at him. And he says, hey, hey, come here. And the laborer goes over to him, and he's, you know, his fists are clenched. He's enraged. And he says, what do you want? And the old man calls him close and he goes, hey, you've been drinking sake? You know, which is the Japanese wine. And the laborer says, yeah, what's it to you? And this old man looks at him and he says, oh, I love sake. Me and my wife, we like to drink it warm. Do you ever drink it warm? Warm is the best and we like to drink it outside, out back of our house. And we have this nice little garden. We'll, we'll warm the sake and we'll have it right underneath this persimmon tree and we'll drink the sake we'll drink it year round we'll drink it when it's you know cold we'll drink it in the summer it's wonderful and this laborer you know who's just in a fury who's about to get in a fight he starts getting confused and his fists start to soften his face starts to soften in confusion and uh he looks at this old man and he says yeah i like persimmons too and the old man says to him, he goes, yeah, and I'll, I'll bet you like to drink sake with your wife too, don't you? And uh, the laborer looks at him, he gets a sad expression, he goes, no. He says, I don't got no wife. I don't got no job. I'm so alone. I'm so sad. And the old man says, yeah, yeah, I understand. The train pulls up to a uh, its train station, and this Aikido master, who was about to be vindictive, you know, he was about to be self-righteous and condemn this man. He's feeling dirtier than the laborer because he saw that his self-righteousness would put, had dirtied him. He was feeling dirtier than this laborer who was acting aggressive and violent. And he gets off the train, and as he's getting off, he looks back, and he sees this big laborer was causing all this destruction, all this anger. It was all out of his pain, out of his loneliness. And as he's getting off the train, he sees this laborer laying his head down. 
in the old man's lap. And the old man is just petting his hair and listening to him. And this Aikido master who's very capable, very strong, been training a lot, he gets off and he sits down at the train station and he realizes that he had just seen true Aikido, true martial skill, which is never to do harm, never to use your power to cause harm to somebody else, but it's to master your own emotions, understand and absorb the energy around you and neutralize it in a way that you can create something beautiful in the world instead of causing more harm. So I hope this is a useful story to you. It's been useful for me over the years. I heard it from uh, wonderful teachers, Ram Das, and also a longtime mentor of mine, Lance Sobel, a very skilled Aikido practitioner in Seattle. And if you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear them. But anger is on my mind today. How do we work with it? How do we neutralize it so it doesn't cause more harm, so that it doesn't leave our body and go out into the world? Because there's already so much conflict. So sending love to everyone. And uh, hope you have a beautiful day and a beautiful weekend. Ashley and I are heading up to the Grand Canyon to uh, go to nature, our, our church. Be well.